<laughs> we got that little robot voice. Well, welcome to everyone, to those of you, you yogis who have been practicing with me for a while. I'm going to put you on mute so we don't have any background noise. If you need to come off of mute at any point to ask me a question, you can't see, you can't hear, please feel free to do that so that you, because I can't always see if somebody does something in the chat. So let's do mute, but we're still all connected and all together. So there's about 14 of us together uh, taking this class. Some of you will be here live. Uh, some of you are joining us on video. So an equal welcome to all of you, whether you're on the, on the virtual Zoom or whether you're doing the videos. And special welcome to those of you who have not practiced with me uh, before. Um, that would be Natalia, I don't think you've practiced with me before, and Will, who is on the, going to be joining us in video at least for the first couple of times. And I don't know, Barbara Tennis is new in this group. I, don't, I think you may have come to my classes before, other classes, and Pat is uh, also new in this group. Um, so welcome, and um, Betsy, who has practiced with me before, is uh, new to this class, but um, so this is really an extension, an exp what we could call an expansion of what started as a chair yoga class and now will be a combination chair yoga and gentle postures on the mat. I want to begin by saying that every one of us, each one of you, is a unique constellation of strengths and challenges that you bring in your body. And not just the body, but we, we have aspects of ourselves physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, where we are open, fluid, free, graceful, and joyful. And we also have areas of our being on all those levels where we are restricted, perhaps armored, stuck, tight, blocked, and where we experience discomfort. I say welcome to being human, right? <laughs> that is what the human experience is, is about. And all that you are is welcome here. And I want to invite us all, hopefully, I, I would like to create a space where we can bravely bring all of that we are. <clears throat> the good, the bad, the ugly, <laughs> the easy, the challenging, to our practice in the spirit of inquiry. So listen and honor yourself. Lovingly challenge yourself, but don't push or force beyond what feels safe for you. Make the practice joyful for you. So let's begin by coming into our yogic seat in the chair um, and just as a reminder, um, when we sit in the chair for yoga practice, we don't sit the same way that we typically sit in a chair, leaning with our back against the chair. We want to actually bring the sitting bones to the very front edge of the chair, almost like you're going to slide off. So those sit bones are right at the front edge, and your knees are in line with your hips. And if you have short legs like me, you might want to take a fold of a blanket and put it under your feet so your knees are somewhat in line with your hips. If you uh, are tall and you find that your knees are, when you sit, are higher than your hips, then you might want to take the chair to the blanket and just sit on top of the blanket. But either way, I'm going to turn sideways just so you can see, either way, you want to invite a long and lifted spine. That is one of the first essential practices of yoga, to find that long spine. So you can see how I'm sitting with my shoulders in line with my hips, and it's inviting my belly muscles, my core muscles, to activate, to support that long spine. We roll the shoulders back and down to spread the heart. Lengthen up through the crown of the head. Root down through the tailbone. You can visualize the tip of your tailbone sending a tap root down into the earth, right through the bottom of the chair into the earth to support and ground you. 
and we can send the crown of the head up to the sky as if there's a cord of energy that is suspending you from the heavens. And we want to do that. Lifting the crown of the head does not mean lifting the chin. You want to keep the back of the neck nice and long. So keep the chin level with the floor or maybe even slightly tucked. So you can experiment with that uh, angle of your head and your chin so that your, the back of your neck stays nice and lengthened as, an, as, as a continuation of the beautiful line of your spine. And in yoga, there is a subtle nerve or uh, energetic channel that moves from the base of your spine all the way up through your spine and up through the top of the head and beyond the top of the head. And that line of energy is called the shishumna. And it is seen as the energetic conduit or channel through which your life force flows. Your subtle life energy or vital life force which we call prana. And so we want to make sure that we begin by lengthening and opening that channel. If your chin is lifted and you've got a, a bend or a kink in the back of the neck, that stops that energy from flowing. If you're slouching and letting the shoulders roll forward or letting the low back round, that blocks that energy. So we want to find that elegant lift, long spine, so that that, that life force can freely flow through us. And then there are all these other subtle channels through which that energy, as it flows through the shishumna, branches off in this network of, of light and energy through our whole subtle body. So we begin by lifting the lower ribs away from the hips to create lots of space for the breath. And let the shoulders settle away from the ears. So Because we often tend to uh, have this unconscious shrugging. It's a, a, a protective action that we have where we let the shoulders, where we're tense and the shoulders are insidiously moving up toward the ears. So we want to consciously draw them down away from the ears and then bring the shoulder blades, the scapulae, those flat bones in the upper back toward one another as if they want to kiss one another just enough so that you can feel that expansion in the heart. And you can even visualize the heart. Uh, in yoga, the heart is depicted as an opening lotus flower. So as you open the heart with that physical gesture, perhaps bringing that visualization, allowing that, that lotus of the heart to open up, and turning the palms upward on your thighs so that we begin in the state of receptivity. Long spine, open heart, open hands saying, here I am, ready to receive, ready to open, ready to feel. Let your eyes close for a moment. Bring your awareness to your breath. Lips gently closed, just bringing, just noticing the breath moving in and out through the nostrils. Just notice how the breath naturally moves Coming into this yogic seat, this asana, that's a Sanskrit word that originally meant seat. Now we use it to mean all of the poses, but the original meaning means seat. Coming into your yogic seat is like stepping into your own personal sanctuary, a place of stillness, a place of mindfulness. And the doorway into that inner temple is the breath a mindful breath. So let's intentionally open that doorway into presence by deepening the breath, taking a long, slow, deep breath in. Let the breath fill the belly, expanding the low belly. Let it fill up, widening the ribs, and let it lift up into the chest. Draw the breath all the way up to the collarbones. Pause at the top for a moment to feel that fullness. And then exhale through the nose, emptying your chest, emptying your ribs, emptying your belly. If you're new to yoga, this movement of breath from belly through ribs to chest and then back down in the other direction might take a little practice to get used to. We'll be working on that together again and again. So don't worry if it feels a little bit 
uh, challenging now. Just focus on taking a deep, full breath in through the nose. Let the breath lift up into the chest to surround that heart, that lotus of the heart with life force, with prana. When you feel full, exhale, completely emptying the chest, emptying the ribs, emptying the belly. At the end of the exhale, drawing the navel in toward the spine to completely release all the breath. And a few more breaths like that. Filling up as if you are an empty vessel into which that life energy, prana, is being poured. And as you know, an empty vessel fills up from bottom to top. Fill it all the way up to the brim, to your shoulders. Pause to feel that fullness. And then exhale, we pour it back out. And just like we empty a pitcher, it pours out from top to bottom. You may need to keep refreshing the posture, inviting the spine to lengthen and the heart to open. Just a few more long, slow, sweeping breaths. If you've been practicing yoga for a while and you know the ujjayi breath, you can layer that on with a gentle narrowing of the back of the throat so you hear that whisper sound. Otherwise, just simply fill up deeply and enjoy your breathing. Enjoy the aliveness that a deep breath brings knowing that it is your portal into that sanctuary of presence. And then let the eyes open with a soft gaze. And now let the breath lift the arms just to shoulder height. Reach out in both directions so you expand the space between your middle finger on the right hand and your middle finger on the left hand. Really widen and see if you can feel that physically and energetically as a blossoming open of the heart. Feel it expand through the heart, then turn the palms up. And then let that rolling open, not be just the palms, but the wrists turn up, the inner elbows turn up, and let the upper arms roll open and allow that to invite the shoulders to draw down, to roll back and down. Shoulder blades come toward one another, so you're coming into that gesture of saying yes with your body, with your mind, with your breath, a gesture of saying yes, here I am, open to possibility open to everything that this day brings, that this practice brings. On the next inhale, let the palms touch at the top of the breath overhead. Exhale down the center line of the body, right down through the middle of the forehead, through the nose, through the throat. Let the hands land at the heart in prayer. So let's do that, sinking it up with breath. Inhale to halfway, roll open at the top of the breath, the palms touch. Exhale, take a long, slow exhale to gather in. Palms join in prayer at the heart. So each time you open up, you're opening to possibility, opening to presence, open to being fully alive. At the top of the breath, the hands meet and exhale slowly. Take the whole breath to meet back at the heart, gathering in your awareness, your attention, your mindfulness, your presence. So opening up, what are you opening to now? Possibility, aliveness, joy, grace. Exhaling, just calling your mind, heart, and body to sync up in the spirit of presence and alertness and gratitude. A few more like that. Opening up and gathering in. Again, in breath. So we want to sync up the breathing, the attention, and the movement. It's a very simple movement, but it's very powerful. Every single movement that we do has a physical benefit and an energetic and emotional, mental and spiritual benefit. And on this last one, I invite you to fill in the blank. What is it that you're opening up to today in this practice right here and now? And what is it that you need to claim as yours to gather in? Perhaps an intention or a dedication or a prayer that like you'd like to bring between the palms of the hands as they settle at the heart, thumbs gently resting in the center of the chest. And those of you who wish to join me in the sound of Om may do so now.
And the sound of Om really has no translatable meaning. It is simply an opening to that which is beyond the mind, to that which reminds us of our inherent interconnectedness, to what that which is infinite and eternal, could be opening to a sense of higher power or just simply your own inherent inner light. Taking a deep breath in, let's join our voices on the exhale in the sound of Om. Let your eyes open with a soft gaze if they've been closed and bring your hands to your knees. Again, refresh your posture. Make sure you're forward on your chair, long spine. We're going to come into the six movements of the spine practice as an opening warm-up. These, if you do nothing else as part of your yoga practice, just these six movements bring so much energy, aliveness, and um, prana, life force, invigorating energy to your physical, emotional, spiritual, mental body. Inhale, draw the shoulders back and down, spread the heart. I'll turn sideways for this one so that you can see the movement of the spine. You're gonna arch back and let the, uh, the hip pointers come forward, look up. So open the throat, exhale, chin to chest. Roll back on your sitting bones and bring the shoulders forward. Draw the navel in. <laughs> Rocking forward and back, arching the spine one way and the other way, finding what we call cat-cow movements, or flexion, extension, back bend and forward bend. And your sitting bones are going to roll forward and back on the chair like they are the blades of a rocking chair, rocking forward and back. Letting the heart open on the inhale, the throat open as you lift the chin, exhaling, dropping chin to chest, drawing shoulders forward, spreading behind the heart. And let the navel draw in at the end of those exhales. And so you're syncing up your breathing and your movement, taking the whole breath to come into each expression of this movement. Spinal flexion and extension. Back bend and forward bend. Cat and cow. Inhaling, exhaling. Couple more at your own pace. These are the first two essential movements of the spine. Do it to the depth, the level of depth that you're comfortable. It's not about imitating me, it's about feeling it in your own body. And then come back to neutral. Once again, refresh your posture, lengthening up through the spine, rooting down through the crown, lengthening up, rooting down through the tail. Shoulders down and back, heart open. I'll mirror you here so you can bring your right hand down to the chair, not gripping hard, but gently holding the chair for support. Let the left hand rise. Reach up and see if you can do this to invite length through the whole side of the torso without scrunching the shoulders up toward the ear. So keep the shoulder drop down, but reach up so you have a line of energy that goes from your sitting bone on the left side up through your fingertips. And then as you're comfortable, take it into a side bend, supporting yourself with that right hand, keeping both sit bones down. Notice if your elbow wants to bend and see if you can stay long with that arm so that we have a long line of energy from your left buttock to your fingertips. <sighs> Reach long and away, expand and let the ribs smile open here. Take a deep breath in and invite space between the ribs. Exhale, slowly come up to center and float the arm down. Uh, take a moment to notice the difference between that left side and right side. If you notice more aliveness, space, energy, tingling, that's prana. That's the life energy that we're opening up to. Inhale, reach up through the right fingertips, unshrug the shoulders, find length and space. Support yourself with your left hand on the side of the chair and take the side bend here. Keep both sit bones rooting down, reach long and away. Send that line of energy out through your fingertips on the right side. Staying in one plane, notice if your uh, torso is folding forward. Uh, just keeping them in the same plane as your hips. <sighs> And expand, breathe into the space between the ribs and exhale, release. <sighs> Notice the aliveness. Prana, by the, by the way, is the same thing that the Chinese call chi, the Japanese call ki. Inhale, other side lifting. Left side, 
reaching over to the right. Inhale up to center, float down, and other side. Inhale to lengthen, exhale to deepen into that side bend. So these are the two other essential movements of the spine, reaching up and releasing. Take a moment to roll the shoulders. There's tension can build up after we do some of these movements and stretches. We can get this inadvertent tension that sometimes stays as a residual, uh, sort of as a residual tension from the posture. So you find a prana response, a way to ah, intuitively let go of anything that might have built up there. So see what you can offer out to roll off of your shoulders today. Roll forward, roll up, and as you release down and back, let go of whatever weight you're carrying around on your shoulders. Ah, something in your life that you could say, ah, I'm ready to just offer you out, let you go, Jeez, just for now. Try rolling f up and forward. Ha. Ah. Hmm. Ha. Ah. Then turn the palms up once again, coming back to that opening posture, your yoga asana. Long spine, open heart, open hands. Let your eyes close for a moment just to feel what aliveness you've invited in so far. Doesn't take a lot to invite that prana to flow, to unblock the channels, unkink, and release and let go. Let's take the other two essential movements of the spine, spinal twists. So once again, refresh your posture. On the inhale, let the arms reach and rise. Reach through the right, reach through the left. And exhale, take a turn, a twist of your spine to your right, letting your left hand come to the outside of your right thigh or knee. Your right hand can come either to the base of the chair or if it's available to the back of the chair. And turning your shoulders as far as they can comfortably go to the right, looking over your shoulder. Lead with the heart and let the head follow. I always think that's good advice for life in general. Inhale up to center. We're just going to flow side to side. Exhale into a twist to the other side. Finding a little leverage with your opposite hand on your thigh or knee. Letting the shoulders roll down away from the ears, looking over behind you, behind your left shoulder until all the breath is released. And then flow side to side, in breath center, exhale, twist. These are very simple. At your own pace, let's flow side to side. These are very simple, but essential movements of the spine to unkink, unblock, and invite that life energy to flow. You can do this when you first wake up in the morning. It's even fine to do at any time of the day or even before bed so that you may wake up a little less stiff in the morning. Very simple but essential movements of the spine. If you do nothing else, just do this practice every day. Next time the hands come back up to center, after you feel complete on both sides, palms come together, and exhale, return to the heart, back into that gathering in gesture to come back to whatever it is that you need to call in to your life at this time. Coming back to that quality of being right here, right now. Then from here, let the hands meet behind you. I'm going to come into the posture called Yoga Mudra. So I'm going to invite you to interlace your fingers and see if you can reach the hands down and away from you. So again, you need to be very far forward on your chair. Maybe uh, if you're using a folding chair like me, you can slip the hands in the space between the uh, back of the chair and the seat of the chair. And if your hands don't want, if it's hard to clasp your hands and straighten your arms at the same time, if the elbows want to go bent, that's a perfect opportunity to use the strap. Maybe just a few inches of strap here, just so that you can get, you'll, you'll find that it really increases your range of motion here to be able to lift the hands 
Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Feel that lotus of the heart blossoming open. Big breath in, and you can either stay here, just visualizing those petals opening, ah, lifting up through the crown of the head, or if it's comfortable, you can fold over onto your thighs, lift the hands, let the crown of the head release toward the mat, if it's comfortable for you to put your head uh, below your hips. If not, you can just go part way forward. Some people find it easier to actually place a bolster or rolled up blanket or pillow on top of the knee so you have a little support here if it's hard to f come into a complete forward fold over the thighs. Lift the hands, lift them up overhead, up to the sky, and then maybe toward the front of your mat. <sighs> And just let the head go. If it feels good and appropriate for you, you can find some movement of the neck. Nodding yes, nodding no. And release the hands and just let them hang down. If coming into this forward fold doesn't feel comfortable for you, you can stay upright and just let the shoulders fold forward and the chin drop toward the chest. Letting the arms dangle down, perhaps. If you're coming into a seated forward fold, just find any wiggles and waggles of the arms and the head that invite a releasing, lengthening of the space uh, between the vertebrae as the spine hangs down. You can make a sound of letting go here if there's something that needs to be released. You don't even have to know what it is. If you can feel it in your body, feel it energetically, just take a deep breath in and make a sound, no matter how weird, we're all on mute. <sighs> then bring your hands to your thighs and slowly roll up. Take your time here. Chin stays at the chest and then slowly let the head come up last. You might find, a little, find yourself a little lightheaded, so just take a couple of deep breaths to come back to center. Feel all that prana moving through you. Then let the feet come a little bit wider uh, than your hips, maybe as wide as your mat and bring your hands onto your thighs. And we're gonna just invite some movement into the torso here by taking some circles. You can start with the circle small, just shifting your weight side to side as your shoulders and head make a circle on the sky. And then as you get comfortable with this, play with going a little bit deeper. So you challenge your balance and stability a little bit by shifting side to side, but both sit bones remain, both buttocks remain connected with the seat of the chair. <sighs> Making those circles as wide as you can comfortably go. Feet stay anchored and planted into the floor beneath you. Some of you may not have a mat under your chair like I do, that's, that's fine. Uh, and then try going the other way. Start wide this time. Start wide and let the circle spiral inward, going a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller. Inviting that, uh, the muscles in the middle region of the torso to activate, come alive. Spiraling back inward, coming back to center. Once again, lengthening up opening the heart, softening the shoulders away from the ears as the shoulder blades, the wingtips of the shoulder blades wanna come toward one another. Lotus of the heart opens wide. Then bring the feet as wide as you can. Toes turned out about 45 degrees. So you're gonna feel a little stretch in the inner thighs here. Once again, you're sitting forward on your chair. You're not leaning your back against the chair. You're inviting that long and lifted spine, rooting down through the tail, lifting up through the crown, open in the heart. So we get a little bit of a hip opener here. Your legs, if they don't go as wide as mine, that's fine. Just feel, find what's comfortable for your inner thighs, hips, and knees. Plant the feet firmly on the ground, on the floor, with the toes pointed out 45 degrees. This is your goddess pose. So let the elbows come to shoulder height, and we're gonna make a 90 degree angle with your arms. So notice if your elbows wanna sag down and keep them at shoulder height, drawing back a little so you have a nice wide radiant heart. And your fingers are gonna be nice and wide here. So it's like there's radiance coming out of the heart, coming out of the hands, coming out of the third eye right here between the eyebrows, out of the crown of the head. You are that 
powerful, strong goddess. And everyone has that goddess within them, whether it's ma you're male or female. We all have that anima and animus within us. So we get that nice opening in the hips. We get that sense of power and energy moving through us. That's the symbol of goddess in the yoga tradition, is what we call shakti or energy or power. And then let the arms open wide, as wide as the world, as wide as the universe. So this is the gesture of the, the goddess who embraces the entire universe. It is uh, known as Jagatambe, the mother of the universe. Wide open from fingertips to fingertips, wide open heart, big breath in. And then exhale, cross the elbows and let the goddess embrace you. So you're gonna bring one elbow on top of the other. See if you can walk your fingertips toward one another along the back body, chin to chest, round the upper back. So you're gonna round the spine a little as you tuck the chin. Inhale on the in breath, opening wide, goddess Jagatambe. Open, embraces the world. Exhale, cross the elbows the other way. Goddess embraces you. And again, you can try to walk the fingertips together, bring the chin down to the chest. Feel that stretch behind the heart, between the shoulder blades. Inhale, opening up, embracing the world. Exhale, embracing you. So you're gonna switch how you cross your elbows each time. Let's try this a few more times. Embracing the whole universe. Exhale, embracing you. At your own pace, flow opening and embracing. Opening, heart as wide as the world. Exhale, feeling uh, that divine embrace. One more each side. Coming back to center, arms, to, uh, hands touch overhead and exhale down the center line of the body, coming back into that gesture of presence. Now take the hands and press them into your thighs. We're gonna take one seated twist here, um, a shoulder dip twist. So you're gonna press your right hand, I'm gonna mirror you here, press your right hand into your thigh, it could be the inner thigh or the top of the thigh, to straighten your right arm. The left hand just rests on your thigh and, stay, and the elbow stays bent. Just dip that right shoulder down. So you're gonna to keep both sit bones on the chair, dip that shoulder down, roll the left shoulder open and look up at the sky over your left shoulder. So you're pressing into your inner thigh, straightening your right arm, letting that shoulder dip down, turning your heart toward your left, taking a little spinal twist there. Press into the thighs to come back up. And other side, dipping the left shoulder down, rolling right shoulder open, look up at the sky if you can, over your right shoulder. L right elbow stays bent, left arm straightens and presses into thigh. And back up to center. Ha! Ah, that's an invigorating twist. Bounce the legs together, shake out the arms, turn the palms up, just notice. Notice the reverberation of that practice, that goddess sequence. Connect again with your breath. That is your anchor, your home base. A deep, long, slow yogic breath, filling, breath filling up into the chest, emptying completely. In and out through the nose. And then when you're ready, I invite you to come to standing. I'm gonna turn my chair so that you can see. You can just come behind your chair. And we're gonna come into a few standing postures using the chair. We're gonna come into, now those of you who've been practicing with me before know this pose. We're gonna do the downward facing dog version using the chair. Some of you will be doing it with the hands on the back of the chair. If you feel comfortable, if you're experienced with this pose and you feel comfortable having the hands flat on the back of the chair, if you have a folding chair here, you can do that. Just do what feels comfortable for you. But if you're new at this or haven't practiced in a while, perhaps doing it the way that I'm gonna to demonstrate today. So you're going to walk back. You wanna have your hips over your feet uh, here. So the legs are straight, and you're gonna walk back as far as you can comfortably go but, and keep your arms straight. Do not grip the chair, keep the arms extended, 
And just let the chair, you're going to hold the chair, but you're not going to grip tight. We don't need extra tension there. Just going to gently press into the top of the chair. And from here, allow the heart to melt down. You want your feet flat, toes pointing straight ahead. Your feet are about hip width apart. Let the low belly press toward the thighs. So you get a nice pelvic tilt here, lifting the tailbone. And just take a few minutes, to, a few moments, a few breaths here. Not a few minutes, that would be a long time. A few breaths to just allow the heart to melt. The head can hang down a little bit or you can keep your ears in line with your upper arms. See if you can spread your sit bones apart like you are a peacock fanning its feathers wide. <sighs> to come out of the pose, bend the knees gently, press into the top of the chair, slowly rise up and walk to the back of your chair. Ah. And just shake out the arms. You're going to feel invigorating energy in the arms and shoulders. You can interlace your fingers behind you and take that yoga mudra, just letting the heart expand like this, maybe using your strap, maybe clasping your hands as an opposite stretch there, to expand wide through the heart. And then let's do that again, bringing the hands to the back of the chair. Walk back. You're going to try to have your whole back body from your hips to your hands, a flat line, and then just allow the heart to sink down a little bit. I invite you to, to bring your attention to your core here, your belly muscles, and see if you can get a little Uddiyana Bandha, which in Sanskrit means abdominal lift. So the navel draws in and up toward the heart to support this lengthening of the spine. Ah. You can feel a nice stretch in the backs of the legs. If it's a little too intense in the backs of the legs, you can bend the knees slightly. Feel a stretch in the hamstrings here, backs of the thighs. One more breath here. And then pressing into the chair, walk to the back of your chair. Ah. Coming into mountain pose, standing with your shoulders over your hips, hips over ankles. Palms open, just turn your palms open in front of you. This is the mountain pose. It's kind of a home-based standing pose as our seated asana is a home-based seated pose. I'm gonna invite you to bring your right foot under the chair behind you, just a little bit forward, and step your left foot back about a leg length. Come onto the ball of your foot. We're going to come into the balancing warrior one pose. Your hips are squared to the front. The warrior pose is about facing our challenges head on. So you want those hips to be squared, facing straight in front of you. Tailbone roots down. Notice if your back knee is bending and see if you can press the back of the knee up and away. You're on the ball of your back foot and pressing back and away through your back heel. Now, you can either stay, and your front knee is over the ankle, so make sure that your knee is not behind your ankle, but your lower leg on the right side is straight up and down. Knee over ankle, foot flat. Shoulders square, again, facing head on, whatever challenge may be in front of you today. And bring your left hand to the sky. Just the right hand helps you hold on for balance. Yeah. If it's available to you, you can have both hands reaching to the sky without shrugging the shoulders up to the ears. This is your warrior one pose, but it's fine to stay holding on with either both or one hand. If you feel steady and comfortable here, you can take it to the next level of challenge by coming into that yoga mudra, opening the heart. I call this one courageous warrior <sighs> because it takes courage to open your heart like this. Reach both hands to the chair, both hands to the back of the chair. And if you want to take this into the fl a flow with, with downward facing dog, step back and take your downward facing dog one more time. Stretching the backs of the legs, see if it feels any different this time. Ah. And then rising up, this time I invite you to step your left foot just under chair, the chair, so the knee is face is right uh, 
by the back of your chair, your knee over your ankle, so your front thigh comes to as close to parallel as you can. If you need a shorter stance for balance or just if you feel like your front leg feels weak and challenged that way, you can have your leg at a more of a 45 degree angle. But what you don't want to do is let that back knee sag. You want to energize that back leg because what you're doing is you're getting a stretch in the front of the hip flexor here, this psoas muscle area, which is very important to lengthen and stretch. It's also, as you notice, a balance practice. You're on the ball of your back foot, shoulders over hips, so notice if you're leaning forward. You want to find that vertical line of energy rooting you down into the earth, lifting you up to the sky. So you're connecting with your groundedness and your what is expansive and vast. Now, opposite arm lifts. You can stay holding onto the chair without gripping, just gentle touching the chair. Have your hips squared to the front, so that means drawing your left, excuse me, your right hip a little forward and your left hip crease a little bit back, probably. If both hands, if it's available to lift both hands to the sky, play with balance here, or bringing your hands into yoga mudra. Anytime you need to grab the chair for support, it's there for you. <sighs> Spreading the heart nice and wide, blossom it open, big breath, and then release, and step the back foot up. <sighs> All right. Notice the reverberation of that practice in you. Ah. And then from here, how you all doing? Everybody still with me? Great. <laughs> all right, let's do one more balance pose before we come down to the mat. So I'm gonna invite you to come to the side of your chair. Um, how about to your, the right side of your chair? And then with your left hand, you can hold on just with the tippy fingers, okay? So we don't need to grip. Uh, just a gentle touch is probably all you need. And I'm gonna invite you to come into your version of the tree pose. The tree pose, we first find that uh, alignment from the feet up through the crown of the head. And you can bring the sole of your foot, several ways to come into tree. Sole of the foot can come to the calf. There's a beautiful way that it fits together, the arch of the foot fitting into the shape of the calf. Or if you need to, you can use the other hand, and if it's available, bringing the foot to the inside of the thigh and the knee goes straight out to the side. You don't want to press on the knee. You want to be above the knee or below the knee. You want the knee, your right knee turned out to the side, your tailbone rooting down so you feel the hip opening uh, benefit of this pose. All right. Now, you can also have your tippy toes on the floor so that you can do what's called the sapling pose. So you're still getting the hip opener and you're still getting a little balance practice here. Some people find it uh, also helpful to have a block inside the standing leg so that you can put your foot right on there and you get the same tree shape. Now the traditional tree pose, the hands come in prayer, all right? But if that is a balance challenge for you, you can make the sound of one hand clapping, as they say in Zen, all right? So just one hand and you can also play with reaching one branch to the sky, or if it's available, to both sides, both arms, reach your branches to the sky. Fix your gaze into a spot on the floor where you can anchor your attention. A few feet in front of you, maybe six or eight feet in front of you. Soft gaze, that is your drishti point. It's your focal point that anchors you in any balance practice. Keep pressing firmly into the leg that you're pressing your, f that the, the foot, your right foot is pressing into your left either calf or thigh to invite an opening. So you don't want your knee to be pointing out to the front. You want it to be straight out to the side so you get that hip opener. Yeah. And when you're ready to release, gracefully release, you can shake out the standing leg and come to the other side. This time your right hand just gently touches the chair. You can think of it as riding a bicycle. You can come into your expression of tree pose on this side, however it worked for you on the other side. So when you were learning to ride a two-wheeler, 
without the training wheels. You had this moment of balance where it was like, yes, I got it, and then you would lose it. And then you'd steady yourself, find it again, and then you'd lose it. And it's kind of that way with any balance practice. Just be spacious with yourself. You can let go of any self-judgment. Just like when you were a toddler learning to walk, you didn't judge yourself when you fell down. You didn't say, oh, I suck at this. You know, little Johnny is a much better walker than me. You know, you, you didn't think that way. You just got up and did it again. And that's the same spirit that we want to bring to our yoga practice here. So either making the sound of one hand clapping or letting both hands release from the chair. You want to send that tailbone straight down into the earth. So you want to bring your pubic bone forward a little bit so that you flatten through the low back. That will help get that nice hip opener. Yeah. All right. When you feel ready to release your exploration of the tree pose, come down in graceful release. Shake out the standing leg. And just notice how you feel. Take a moment to pause in mountain, turning the palms open, feet hip width apart, toes pointed straight ahead. Let the eyes close for a moment. Feel this practice right here also as a balance pose. It's a balance pose that many of us take for granted. Just the ability to stand upright on two feet. There's many human beings in the world that cannot do that. Let your eyes open again with a soft gaze. And I'm going to invite you to transition now to coming down onto your mat or blanket, whatever space you've set up for yourself to come into some supine poses. All right, so I'll give you a moment to readjust. You might need to readjust your camera, uh, your video, so that you can see me, your, your device, whatever you're using. So I invite you to uh, come onto your back, onto the mat, and have, have all your um, rolled up blankets and pillows and your strap available to you so that you're um, can reach, have them in arm's reach. Some of you may have a bolster, some of you may just have a thick pillow here. And when you come onto your back, um, I'm gonna invite you to protect your low back to start by bringing your feet as wide as your mat or your blanket space and just letting and just let the outer edges line up with that mat or blanket, folded blanket, lengthwise, and let the knees, the inner knees, come together. Take your time getting here. So you're gonna rest your inner knees against one another, and you can experiment with how close you want your feet to your hips or how far away. But what that does is that lengthens the low back so that it takes the lumbar curve away and takes some of the pressure off of the low back. And just let your hands rest on your belly, your low belly below the navel. Mm. Uh, hopefully everybody has found their, their space. Everybody comfortable? You need more time? We'll give you another moment here as we're all getting settled in. It's an opportunity to co connect again with your yogic breathing, which begins in the low belly. So as you breathe in through the nose, see if you can feel with your hands on your belly, the low belly expanding and rising, kind of like a balloon expanding. That's where we want to begin our breath. And then on the exhale, the belly comes back in, draws in, and you can actually give it a little, uh, a little bit of juice by drawing the navel into the spine to completely exhale. 
So we're deepening our range of motion with the breath. Expanding the belly and exhaling, drawing the navel in at the very end to completely release all that needs to be released. That's the first part of your three-part yogic breath and you can just focus right here and now on the belly being the beginning of that filling up and being the end of the emptying out. Breathing from the diaphragm as the diaphragm draws down on the inhale, it, it displaces the organs in the lower abdominal cavity, which is what creates that expansion in the belly. And then it draws back up on the inhale and allows the belly to flatten. In and out through the nose. And then when you're ready, I invite you to hug your thighs in toward your chest. And what you can do here, there's lots of ways that you can do this. You can have your hands behind your thighs. You can have your hands on your shins, your lower legs, or you can wrap your arms around your knees if it's available, around your lower legs, your folded legs, and grab opposite elbows or clasp hands. Whatever feels available to you, but you want to keep the backs of the shoulders softening and melting into the mat. Keep the back of the neck soft. If you notice that reaching your legs causes your shoulders or upper back to pull off, then reach behind your thighs. And from here, as you give yourself this lovely embrace, rock side to side. So you're massaging the muscles on either side of the spine, just gently side to side. Just rocking to one side of the torso and then the other. Keep the back of the neck long. So you might need to tuck the chin just a little bit. And then settle onto the center of your back and bring the hands to your knees. I invite you to find some circling of the knees opening wide so the inner thighs come apart and the knees come to opposite directions and then hug the thighs in toward the ribs and then as the thighs come together press the knees away and open them wide. So you're circling the knees making big circles in opposite directions. So the movement here is you're stirring the hip joint with the head of the thigh bone and you're inviting those hips to uh, sort of glisten with lubrication. So make sure that your knees are going wide apart as you do this and then coming together, just stirring that acetabulum, which is the hip socket with the head of the thigh bone. And you're inviting the synovial fluid, which is the lubricating substance in your joints to flow kind of priming the pump here for some opening of the hips. Try circling the other way now. Knees circle inward, draw in toward the belly, then circle out. How does that feel? And the wider you make these circles, the more you might notice that your belly muscles have to engage a little bit here. So you're actually using your core. Lots of breath, breathing into your lovely hips. Hip, hip, hooray. <laughs> and then once again, hug the thighs in. Inner thighs come together. Hug the thighs in toward the ribs in your apanasana. It's like child's pose on the back. Letting the shoulders and the back of the head soften into the mat. Clasp your hands around your right shin or the back of the thigh and extend your left leg along the mat. If this feels a little too tight on your front of your hip flexor, you can 
bend your knee and put your foot flat. Otherwise, see if you can extend your leg and press out through the heel. So you lengthen through the whole left side of your back body. Tuck the chin a little, melt the backs of the shoulders into the mat. This is called wind relieving pose and it actually is, means exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> it massages the colon, the ascending colon on this side, the descending colon on the other. And so it gets, uh, relieves gas from, from the system. So if anything happens, that's exactly what's supposed to happen. And you're gonna draw that thigh into the rib cage and draw that, angle the knee a little bit toward your armpit on the right side. And we can begin to engage a little bit of abdominal strengthening here by lifting your left leg just to hover off of the mat about a foot. Point and flex your foot. Just point and flex, point and flex. All right. And make some circles so we get that ankle moving, bottom of the foot, calf muscle activated, circle one way, circle the other. And see if you can hold that leg just lifted and hovering off of the mat about a foot. Just let the foot relax now. And exhale, chin to chest, nose toward the navel or toward your pubic bone, lifting the shoulders and the upper back off of the mat. <sighs> Holding here for a few breaths. If it's available, you can release your hands, turn the palms up. So I call this the pose of receiving grace. So the, you turn and you cup your hands. One of my teachers said, spirit's grace is always raining down on us and all we need to do is remember to cup our hands. Uh, if you need to bring one hand behind the head to support you, you can do that chin to chest, nose reaches toward the pelvis, and then when you're ready to release, slowly lower down, let that left leg sink. And come into, for a moment, into Shavasana. Just corpse pose, both legs stretched out, palms turned up, everything softens into the mat. Just feel the reverberation of that practice. It's an abdominal strengthener, what we just did. And massages the internal organs as well. Just feel the tingling, feel the sensations that each pose offers. And then you can hug your left thigh in, snuggle it in close toward the ribs, on the left side, angling the knee toward the armpit, softening the shoulders into the mat, pressing out as you lengthen through the right heel, or if you need to keep your foot flat and your knee slightly bent, you can do that. Ah, hug it in. Massaging the colon on the other side, the descending colon. And then lifting the right leg off of the mat, extending that leg, letting it hover, try pointing and flexing getting that calf muscle to activate. Circling, you're also engaging lower muscles in the lower abdomen on the right side. Circling one way, circling the other. And then as you're ready, chin to chest, see if you can keep the whole upper back and the shoulder blades off of the mat. Chin to chest, nose toward pelvis. Long, slow, deep breaths in and out through the nose. Those of you who know Ujjayi can use that. If you want it and it's available, release the hands, receiving grace pouring down on you. Re turning the palms up, reaching the fingertips to the front of your space toward your f extended foot. Oh yeah, one more breath if you can. And slowly letting the head and shoulders release down, letting that extended leg release down, come back into Shavasana and feel the reverberation of that sequence. It's very important to just find that moment of relaxation at the end of each sequence. Okay. And um, 
from here, we'll do one more, a uh, couple more um, stretches on the back. So you can bend your knees, bringing the foot flat, the feet flat, and the knees pointing up toward the sky. And then I'm going to invite you to come into the figure four pose where you're going to draw your right thigh in toward your ribs and turn your right knee out to the side and cross above your ankle over the left thigh. So there's going to be a hole or a space between your knees. So I'll turn this way so you can see what the figure four looks like. You don't want to be on the ankle. You want to try to be above the ankle so the foot actually comes past the left knee. So you want to really press away with that right knee so you can feel that stretch in the inner thigh. You can feel a little bit of a, a glute stretch. And press that knee away. And if it's available, draw your left thigh in toward your rib cage. Thread your right hand in the space between your left and right thigh. Clasp your hands either behind your left thigh and draw the left thigh in or clasp your hands around your shin on the left side. That gives, it makes it a little juicier. See if you can take your right elbow and press it inside your right thigh to invite a little rotation open of the hip a little bit more. Go for the juice here. Jane Fonda used to tell us back in the 80s, I guess it was, go for the burn. I say go for the juice the place where the sensation is strong and you go that you have that oh yeah feeling enjoying the stretch not to the place where it hurts back off if it hurts that means honoring your edge just draw that left thigh in press that left knee away from you in the opposite direction so you feel like you feel a nice stretch in the glutes on the right side you get a hip opener glute stretch iliotibial band stretch on the outside of the thigh Take two more deep breaths here. Sending the breath into any place where you notice tightness or restriction. Use your breath to massage the area where you feel strong sensation. And then you can release your hands, release the legs, just come back to both feet flat on the mat, knees bent, and just see if you notice a difference between one side and the other. Notice the tingling and buzzing of prana moving through you. And we'll take that stretch on the other side. You know, it's also fine just to turn the knee outward and just let the Lower leg on the left, this time we're going to do the left side. Left knee turns out resting above ankle to the middle of the right thigh. And maybe just taking your left hand and pressing the knee into the inside of the knee. Maybe that's enough for you. Maybe that gives, sends you to your edge. Otherwise, clasp your hand behind your right thigh, draw the right thigh in, or around right shin for a little deeper challenge. See if you can take your left elbow and press into the inner thigh to invite a little bit more juice, a little bit more of that oh yeah feeling. And come to the place where the sensation is strong but not painful. A place where you want to go, ooh yeah. And that is your edge. If you pushed a little harder, it would hurt. So you want to honor that place where the sensation is strong, but it's before the place where you feel pain. You can actually back off a little on the inhale and breathe into, and the exhale, give it a little bit of the juice. You're going to keep the backs of the shoulders and the back of the head soft into the mat. For some people, if even reaching the back of your thigh pulls your shoulders or the back of your neck off of the mat, you may want to actually have a strap behind your, in this case, your right thigh, and use the strap to pull your thigh in. And that way you can soften the backs of your shoulders into the mat. 
<sighs> Massage any areas of strong sensation with the breath. And when you're ready to release, releasing. Hug your knees once more into your chest. Let your knees come into like an L shape now, like you're sitting in a chair. And let the hands come out in a T position, shoulder height. Let the knees float down to one side, keeping that L shape, keeping knees in line with the hips and the ankles stay in line with the knees so your legs make a 90 degree angle. Here you may want to take a pillow or blanket in between your thighs and you want to soften your shoulders, the opposite shoulder down into the mat. So both shoulders make contact with the, with the earth. Turn your head to face the hand that's opposite the direction your knees are going. So if your knees went left, turn your gaze right. Just invite and in enjoying this spinal twist. Long, slow, deep breaths. Then pressing the feet into the, into the mat, draw the knees over to the other side. And you can place the blanket in between your thighs or pillow in between your thighs. If need be here, if there's space between your thighs, you want to fill in that space. Knees stay in line with the pelvis. And keep that 90 degree angle. Arms are open at T position. And soften both shoulders down into the mat. Turn your head in the opposite direction of your knees. If the stretch feels deep and challenging to soften and relax that shoulder into the mat, maybe rolling the blanket a little, folding it so that it's a little thicker, so your knees don't, your inner thighs have a little more space between them. Coming into this reclining twist. Nothing to do here, but just surrender into the pose. No efforting just releasing and letting go into it, using the power of your out-breath to soften and surrender into it. Letting the posture do its work on you. And then slowly releasing this twist, coming back to center. I'm going to invite you to come into Shavasana for our final relaxation. Now, for many of us, it can put strain on the low back to just have your legs extended because you're going to have that lumbar curve in the low back where the low, the low back is not going to be making contact with the mat. So the options here or you can take a rolled up blanket, pillow, or bolster under your knees. You might even need two pillows or a blanket and a pillow to get your knees high enough so that your low back can lengthen and soften into the mat. You want your feet a little bit wider than your hips and just let the toes turn out in opposite directions naturally. Just let them kind of flop out to the opposite corners of your mat or your space. Let the arms be about 45 degrees from the body, 45 degree angle. Walk the shoulders, walk the hands away from you so that your shoulders come away from your ears. Let the backs of the hands rest on the mat so that the palms turn up. 
so that we come into even in this posture of complete non-doing and letting go. We're in that space of receptivity, of readiness to receive the benefits from our practice. All of that prana that we've opened up to with each movement and each deep breath now gets to come streaming into every cell and every nook and cranny of our being, every energy channel. You can even take a little tuck of the shoulder blades toward one another, just a little bit, so that you feel that little opening in the chest. So your heart is wide open, palms are open. Nothing to do here but allow a surrender into the earth, into stillness. I'm going to invite you to let go of even any control or manipulation of the breath. Just let your breath find its own natural rhythm. Trust in the ability of your body to know exactly how much breath it needs. One inhale and one exhale at a time. They say that this is the most challenging posture of all in yoga because it involves a complete letting go and surrendering into non-doing. To allow ourselves to be a human being rather than a human doing. So let the soles of the feet soften into the mat, into the earth. the heels, the tops of the feet. The ankles and the lower legs soften, the shins, the calves. Just let the power of your out breath, let the tension just dissolve. of the thighs, backs of the thighs, soften and release. Let the power of each exhale, as it naturally flows out of you like a wave, carry away anything that isn't needed, any holding that isn't needed in your legs and feet. Let the hips soften, the buttocks, the whole pelvic area softens and releases. Let the low back, the buttocks soften and release into the earth. The low belly. The rib cage area, front, sides and back of your ribs soften and release as they gently pulse with the breath like butterfly wings opening and closing. And trusting in the natural, perfect rhythm of your heartbeat, relax around the chest and the upper back, offering out any holding there into the earth. Let the tension in the shoulders and neck just glide down the arms like water running down a rock. Out the fingertips, down the arms. Out the palms of the hands and the fingertips. the neck soften and release, the back of the neck, the sides of the neck, the throat.
throat. Soften around the jaw, the temples, the brow, the muscles around the eyes, releasing through the top of your head, the back of your head. So from the tips of your toes to the crown of your head, you are completely relaxed. And I offer you these, this beautiful prayer, a phrase from the 23rd Psalm, my cup overflows, or my cup runneth over. In Hebrew, those words are kozi rivaya, my cup overflows. down in front of you. Mm. And then bring the hands down by your sides, maybe giving yourself another embrace as you fold your legs in in apanasana, the pose of self-love, embracing yourself. ready, you can roll over onto one side in your fetal pose, fetal position, which is actually the first yoga posture you ever did in your life before you even came into this world. Your very first asana. And then very slowly inviting the body to come up to a seated position. Really take your time here. You can press one hand into the mat. Let your head come up last to invite the body to come up to seated. If it's comfortable for you to sit in a gentle cross-legged position on the floor, you can otherwise sit, come to sit in your chair.
Once again, finding that long and lifted spine. Open heart. And letting the palms to come together in front of the heart. May we take this well-being and this presence beyond our yoga practice and into our world. May your cup overflow beyond this practice and into the whole of your life. So this, this well-being that we cultivate, may it runneth over to flow into everything that we do in our relationships, in our work, in our communities, in our creative work, in our spiritual life. Until we meet again, let's close with the sound of Om. Deep breath in. And we end with the salutation. Namaste. The divine in me sees and bows to the divine in you. Namaste. And if you'd like to come off mute, if there's anything you want to share or any questions that you have, feel free to do that. I can.